the greatest moment, the greatest turning point in my life was when my younger brother, Greg D, I give him the credit all the time. I say it all the time was when he checked me like a man. He was my younger brother. He was six years younger than me. And this was a long time ago. He couldn't have been no older than 21, 22. He was further along in life than me. He was like, Tom, you trash. Greatest turning point in my life was somebody being absolutely transparent and honest with me about who I was and what I was supposed to be doing in life. But too many times we looking for people to make us feel good about ourselves instead of telling us the truth. I don't care about how you feel. Fuck your feelings. Nobody cares. Take them, throw them in the trash. So like, like, for example, you got my man Andre right here and he said, big time cap. Well, that's why I'm here. And the beauty about me, the beauty in my life is that because my life is an open book, I'm willing to share my network and give you an example of all of these different things that I emphasize every single week. I just go ahead and destroy every single argument that all of these guys have because they always talking about how I ain't no good girls and this and that and whatever, so on and so forth. I give you my whole life. My whole life is an example of it. And I'm going to continue to kill it, continue to destroy all of this narrative that there are no more. So the question is going to become after all of this time, the question is going to come. It's, it's going to become what's wrong with you? Are you the person that you're supposed to be? And are you attracting what you are? Are you truly the person that you're supposed to be? Because the guys that's winning, all my friends, we don't have problems like y'all. Now, that don't mean that these chicks ain't for the streets, that there's a lot of chicks that are for the streets, but they not in our circle. We don't attract that type of nonsense. No matter where we go, even the chicks that's for the streets, when they get in our presence, they change, they evolve. They're trying to become a better version of themselves. They're trying to present themselves differently because they understand that they're in different company. So then the question becomes, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, fam? I give the game so that I can educate you, so that I can protect you, so that I can help you to understand what to look for and not to look for. But then along with that, I advocate for you to do the work. And when you do the work and you become the man that you're supposed to be, you no longer are subjected to the same things that regular people are subjected to. It's better on this side. It's better to be a winner. It's like having good credit, right? People that have bad credit, they have to shop around. They got to go get a co-signer. They looking through the weeds to try to find the right deal. They got to get their money up because they got to get a bigger down payment. They got to jump through so many hoops because they're not what they're supposed to be. On the flip side of that conversation, people that have good credit can walk in anywhere anywhere and don't have the same issues that you have it's the same thing in everything else in life when you educate it when you're in a stem field when you're in a certain space where you're winning when you have a winning mentality when you got a winning network you don't have the same issues that people are having that don't and it's black and white Everybody keep trying to make this thing so gray area and all this other type of stuff. It's not. My mom, gorgeous. My mom is gorgeous. She fit, feminine, submissive, cooperative, all of these things. My mom was out. She was only on the market after my dad passed away for about a year. And that's because she didn't want to be bothered. And then she married right into another dope guy right after that. Now, why is that? Why is it that my mom that's approaching 70 look better than these chicks that's 40 and winning every single time. Never had a problem being protected. Never had a problem running into any kind of good guys. She repel and certain guys don't even approach her because they know that they don't even fit. They not even ready. They not prepared for. It. Think about it though. Let, honestly, let's be honest with ourselves and look in the mirror. Let's think about it for a second, y'all. Let's, let's just talk about it, right? Let's say you at the space that you're in and I'm an advocate for guys doing the work 
I believe in winners. I, I push y'all. I love y'all. I rock with y'all. I absolutely think that y'all are dope. But let's just say, for example, you. And you got the best girl that you can possibly get. I mean, the woman of your dream. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. She's a virgin. She's a good girl. She was raised in church. She's fit, feminine, cooperative. She's she's all of these phenomenal things, right? All of these. And then you, you get her. You. Don't look at the screen. Don't look at me because I'm winning in everything. All of the dope women are around me. But you get her, right? What you going to do with her? If you got her, you would probably ruin her. And then she would be collateral damage like all the rest of these chicks out here. And then somebody else would be trying to pick up the pieces from the damage that you left because you failed to come behind and actually be the person that you were supposed to be. And you asked for something that you wasn't prepared for. You looking for something that you can't handle. You're not built to be able to handle this caliber of a woman. She requires a lot. It's just the truth. You're going to have to stay in your lane, fam. You, you deserve that other chick. She not quite there. She a little rough around the edges. She getting there. She doing the work. But that's the one that you need to be shooting for because you're not quite ready for the one that's already there, man. I mean, I know some bad chicks, some bad chicks. And I'm talking about physically, mentally, they smart, they on their grind, they get into the bread, they <laughs> natural, like they own hair, they don't wear, my chick don't wear no weave. All of that that you see her, that's all her. My chicks stay in the gym. And that's my day one. I didn't even marry her for nothing outside of the fact that I thought that she was one of the best people inside and out that I ever met in my life. But she stays focused because she understands that there's expectations. My, let me tell you about Rita. Rita won't even get on camera. She won't leave out the house unless she got herself together. Now, why is that? Because she understands that she's participating and she's an extension of me. So is every other woman that's around me. My mom, before she even aligned with anything that goes on in my life, before she steps out with me, she makes sure that she's 100% on top of things because somebody might recognize her and tire her to me. She's an extension of me. What would you do with her if you got her, fam? If you got this chick, what would you do with her? You're not built for it, bro. You're not built for it. See, the problem is that you want women to come back down to your level. Come down to your level. You don't understand how the game works. Now, I didn't make the game. I'm telling you that women are hypergamous. They're going to go for the best available option. Now, listen, this is, this is different talk. This is cloth talk right here because we're not talking about bad girls. We're not talking about these chicks for the streets. We having a conversation about a whole nother caliber, caliber of woman, a woman that's truly ready to jump off the bridge with you. If you say go, because she's that dedicated to what y'all got going on. Are you jumping off the bridge into a sewer leading all of these chicks into a sewer because you're not the, you're not what you're supposed to be? See, accountability starts first at home. People always ask this question to me. They say, Anton. What do you owe the black community? What do you owe people? Or they'll phrase it like this. They'll say, Anton, <laughs> how can I participate in building up my community? My answer is the same every single time. It starts at home first. Clean up your backyard. Take care of your kids. Marry that chick. Like, why is she good enough to have sex with, but she not good enough to marry? Why is she good enough to have kids with, but she not good enough to marry? Why is your kids running around reckless and then somebody else got to come back behind them, fix them up? I got to coach these dudes up because you failed as a father. So now they coming to Anton and Anton is more of enough. I'm more than enough man for these dudes. I'm doing the work. We winning on this side. My guys is winning. But I got to come behind you, fix your mistakes, coach them up, and then you still want credit for Father's Day. 
What we talking about, bro? Yo, we we going we going to have a conversation, we going to be real. We going to have a conversation be real or you want to go over to one of these other road uh red pill channels so they can teach you and give you this echo chamber to feel good about yourself. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. When you get done listening to this rhetoric that makes you feel feel good about yourself, you still you. When you wake up in the morning, it wasn't a bad dream. You still you. Whatever that is, if you awesome, you awesome. If you a loser, you a loser. But it ain't going to be nobody else's responsibility to get themselves together but you. You still you, fam. You still you. The greatest moment, the greatest turning point in my life was when my younger brother, Greg D, I give him the credit all the time. I say it all the time was when he checked me like a man. He was my younger brother. He was six years younger than me. And this was a long time ago. He couldn't have been no older than 21, 22. He was further along in life than me. He was like, Tom, you trash. Greatest turning point in my life was somebody being absolutely transparent and honest with me about who I was and what I was supposed to be doing in life. But too many times we looking for people to make us feel good about ourselves instead of telling us the truth. I don't care about how you feel. Fuck your feelings. Nobody cares. Take them, throw them in the trash. It won't do you no good over here. Because winners don't care about that. Winners don't care about how you feel. We care about winning. We care about results. Nobody goes back in history and says, man, but he felt good about himself. They say he produced this. This is what he said. This is what he did. These are the results. And this is his legacy. You will be forgotten because you are a coward. You are unwilling to do the work and you are a scared little boy walking around in men's shoes. They don't fit you. They don't fit you, fam. I just did a video last week. Accountability. I, you guys, y'all making my, y'all making my life difficult. Y'all making my life difficult. The reason why you're making my life difficult is because I can't go over here and hold this woman accountable because you're not the man that you're supposed to be. Because every time she can point the finger and say, but he trash, why well, I got to be with him? And I don't got to an answer for that. I can't answer that. What am I supposed to do? Uh, just stick with him anyway. He on a struggle bus, but you know, I know you awesome and you beautiful, but just get on the struggle bus with him. Am I supposed to say that? Is that the advice that I give people? I, I know he only work 32 hours a week and he play video games for 40. But just stick with him. He'll get out of it. Come on, man.